Bloodfiend's arm is an insane weapon in the new Elden Ring DLC. It hits super hard, scales well with bleed, and is able to stagger all enemies because of its charged up heavy attacks. And because Elden Ring has plenty of ways to make each of these traits stronger, it makes this weapon just that much more potent. With a decent setup, you can kill bosses with ease. In fact, I was able to clear all the notable bosses in the DLC within a couple of hours, including the optional ones, and I'm not even that good of a player. If you like to bonk your enemies in the head and see big numbers, then this is the build for you. And with that being said, let's get into the guide. All right, here's the build. Before I go over the items and whatnot, and like I said, and like I say in all my video guides, if you don't know where to find an item or an armor piece or a talisman or anything in the game, just Google it. Just type the item in, type in Elden Ring, or go to the Elden Ring Wiki, which is the website that I use to look up stuff, and just look over there. They'll be able to tell you where the item is and how to get it much more efficiently uh, than I can. All right. There's so many YouTube videos out there. So many websites out there. You know, it's really not too hard. Okay. I'm just here to show you the build and uh, to show you that it slaps and it's able to beat the game very easily. Okay. So with that being said, let's get into the main weapon. Blood Fiend's arm. Okay. This weapon is crazy. Now, I think in my experience using the weapon in, in a short amount of time, the most important thing about this weapon is I believe the charged heavy attacks hit twice. I believe so. Okay, whenever I, you know, whenever I was hitting enemies, it seemed like it was hitting twice. It was like a big hit, then a small hit. But nonetheless, it's twice. So, and because it hits twice, the, the blood buildup you see on the screen, 204, that when you land a successful charged heavy attack, that means 408. So every charged heavy attack, you're dealing 408 bleed buildup, which a lot of the times is enough to just bleed off of one hit. You know what I'm saying? So that alone makes this weapon insane. And not only that, um, it does even harder stagger damage, okay? Because a charged heavy normally does like, what, 30 to 40? But because it, it hits twice, I believe it does even more than that. And of course we have a couple ways to stack this, uh, the stagger damage and the blood damage to make this even go even uh, more crazy. All right, so. But with that being said, those are the main things that I noticed about this build. Um, but what we do with the Blood Fiend's arm, obviously we'll want to plus 25 that bitch to up the scaling of the, of the damage, okay, through Strength and Arcane, which is our main two damage stats. And we're gonna go ahead and slap on the Crag Blade Ash of War and infuse it with bleed. So, so, so it, um, gets that blood loss buildup, you know what I'm saying? And of course, if you don't know, if you don't know what Crag Blade does, Crag Blade provides a, uh, physical damage increase, which is great for the build because it does uh, a lot of physical damage, and it uh, increases your stagger damage, your stance damage. Every boss, every enemy in the game has a stance HP bar that you can't see. It's invisible, all right? But um, most of the time, it's around like it's around like 80 to 200. 80 to 160, that's like the sweet spot. And the Blood Fiend's arm, as you saw in the clips in the beginning, it was extremely easy to stagger almost every boss within two charged heavy attacks. So you can imagine just how much stagger damage this weapon does, okay? Um, so boom, Crag Blade, Blood Infusion, easy. For our left hand, we're using the Finger Seal, just so we can cast our incantations, which is Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength, because both great, because both give damage, and you know we love damage out here. And as far as the secondary right hand weapon goes, main hand weapon, just slap on any any um, you know, it could be a short sword, it could be a sword, any weapon that that doesn't weigh too much. Uh, go ahead and slap on seppuku on there so we could activate our blood loss uh, Buffs which uh, is the white mask and the Lord of Blood's exaltation Okay, and of course during the fight we're also procking blood loss so that resets these buffs and you should have the blood loss procced 
uh, to have these buffs on um, at almost all times because of just how much this this build bleeds. Okay, but make sure you have uh, any kind of weapon here that can take seppuku, and the infusion doesn't matter. I just put blood on it just to just, just to fit the theme of the build. Okay, um, for our armor. Every bleed build, if you're running a bleed build, you're wearing the white mask because it gives you a buff every time bleed happens. Every time blood loss occurs, you get a damage buff and blood loss occurs all the time with this build. So it, this will this will be active at all times, okay? And as far as, as far as the rest of the armor set goes, of course, we're going with the Rakshasa set. Each piece adds very small damage, but together it, it's noticeable, okay? But also... Uh, another good thing about the Rakshasa set that people overlook is the poise that a three-piece gives, okay? Whenever I wear the white mask and a, a three-piece Rakshasa, I have uh, 54 poise. And uh, that, that is just over one of the breakpoints of the kind of poise you need to not get staggered or not get, you know, mini-stunned by some light attacks. So would, would, if you have over, like, 51 poise, light attacks, you can still do your shit. You can still move around. You won't get mini-stunned, okay? Light load is great, but most likely if, you're, if you have light load on... Uh, because of the because of the rolls, that's why it's great. But if you have if you have a light load on your equipment um, manager here, that means you probably will get mini stunned by some very small dagger attacks. We don't want that. We don't want that. We want to be able to move around freely. We want to be able to 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 have our charged heavy attacks land. Okay, they don't have too much hyper armor, you know. So the poise that we have is the poise that we get. So we want to make sure we can go through any ta any attacks that they. Um, that they dish out okay so with 54 poise you don't have to worry about being staggered too much or being mini stunned by some light attacks all right so boom rakshasha set s tier set of the new dlc not even close talismans of course the axe talisman probably one of the best talismans early game that you can pick up you can get it right away as you start as you start a new character you just gotta run around a little bit and it enhances your charge attacks and for this build 100 percent of the time we are charge attacking Actually, I take that back. 95% of the time, we are charge attacking. The other 5%, we are landing a critical hit. Okay? Whenever the, whenever we stagger bosses. So Axe Talisman is a no-brainer. And of course, we have the two-handed torse, uh, torse sword talisman. One of the new talismans of the DLC. This talisman is amazing with two-handed strength weapons. It was basically catered towards that. So you gotta run this. More damage, more better. Uh, the Ritual Sword Talisman... This one is kind of interchangeable, okay? Uh, I ran this, maybe half of the bosses. The other half, when I noticed just how much I was staggering, I started to run the Dagger Talisman. And they both performed the same. You know, I was getting the same results. Obviously, if you don't get hit, the, um, the Ritual Sword Talisman is better. But, I mean, you know, like I said, I'm not that good of a player. I get hit almost every boss fight, you know? And so, uh... This would only be effective if you chug a health pot after you get hit. I don't really like that. So, so, so I ran the dagger talisman sometimes, and I like that slightly better. But this is up to you. It really depends how good of a player you are, okay? Um, and of course, the last talisman we're running is the Lord of Blood's Exaltation. It is the, the every time blood loss occurs, you get an increase in attack power, just like the White Mask. And this build is blood lossing before the fight, during the fight, after the fight, all the fucking time, okay? All right, now let's look to our Physic. What am I running in my physic? You can probably already guess. Very simple. Okay. Spike crack tier to enhance our charge attacks. This does stack with the axe talisman. Even more pog. Even more damage. Bada bing bada boom. And of course, the secondary tier. Um, the stone barb crack tier makes attacks more likely to break enemy stances. Basically, it adds stance damage on top of crag blade. This stacks with the crag blade and the the double hit that you that you do with the blood fiend's arm um i mean it goes crazy it goes fucking insane and just like you saw in the beginning of the video it is very easy to stagger every single boss including the hard ones like bale or radon who have very high stances they were getting staggered in two hits it's not even a troll it's crazy okay <clears throat> unfortunately there is one thing i don't like about this tier it, it only lasts 30 seconds. A lot of the tiers for, for your physics, a lot of these, they last three minutes. 
because so normally you can pop your physic first when you're doing your buffs but the stone barbed only lasts 30 seconds okay which makes sense it lasting three minutes sounds a little bit op so <clears throat> because of that we're actually popping our physic last because uh we want to keep that 30 30 percent stance damage is a lot so we want to make sure we keep that active in the boss fight and because this build is so damn strong that you can probably end a fight within 30 seconds most of the time okay so that's our physic as far as the spells that we're using again we're, we're just using buff spells uh, i'm gonna make a bunch of build guides and you're gonna see golden vow and flame grant me strength a lot because they increase your damage okay so flame grant me strength uh it says raises physical attack power it actually raises all types of damage that's wrong that's incorrect but golden okay sorry golden vow does golden vow raises all types of damage uh you know what i meant to say that for the um for the white mask and the lord of blood's exaltation these the these are the items that say attack power but they actually raise spell damage power too and i've tested it that's what i meant to say on that one sorry a little fucking little slip there but in any case we still for, for all physical builds you're gonna run flame grant me strength and in all builds i think you run golden vow it's just more da it's just free damage it's like what 30 percent more damage and, and even some damage negation negation why would you not have that why would you not have that all it takes is a little bit of faith and a finger seal okay we can sacrifice a few levels to gain a 10 20 percent boost in damage you know what i'm saying um so yeah, that's the items. Those are the spells. Those are the physic. Now let's go to the stats. Okay, so for stats, you can see here, the most optimal version with using the least amount of points is being level 257, having 60 vigor, 16 mind. Now the 16 mind looks weird, but the reason why we have exactly 16 mind is so we can cast Golden Val, Flame Grant Me Strength, Crag Blade, and Seppuku without having to use a mana pot we don't we don't want to use mana pots on this build we want to use mana once at the beginning of the fight and that's it okay and 16 mind is it gives us 100 fp letting us be able to cast for all four of those spells without using a mana pot so 16 mind i know it looks weird but it's the exact number that we need okay and of course 60 vigor is the you know uh the highest soft cap for hp 50 endurance the highest soft cap for stamina 80 strength the highest soft cap for physical damage uh we have our 15 15 dexterity just to wield the weapon okay that's all we have dexterity for the weapon does scale off dexterity so if you want to be even higher level sure you can put 80 points in dex but the scaling is very low so it, it would it wouldn't make that much of a difference all right so i just i just go ahead i just went ahead and made dexterity 15 just so i could wield the weapon uh of course and of course this build doesn't need intelligence 25 faith just so we can cast golden vow and flame can't restrength okay without having to put you know the ash for golden vow and a dagger we can use it on our as if with our finger seal instead because we have enough faith and of course probably the most important stat arcane which does scale both the physical but more importantly the bleed damage it's at 80 another soft cap uh, another uh max soft cap for a stat so these are the optimal stats that i would, that I would run for a high level build now of course not everyone's going to be level 250 uh so i'm going to go ahead and show some lower level versions all right so let's go ahead and do probably the first stat breakpoint of this build okay let's do let's do that 40 vigor the first uh, one, one, one of the other soft caps for hp 16 mind for like i said to cast all our spells 30 endurance another soft cap for endurance we're gonna go ahead and put 60 in strength okay the, the 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 soft cap just before 18 go ahead and put 15 in dexterity just so we can um uh, wield the weapon go ahead and put 25 faith so we can cast our spells and let's go ahead and put 60 arcane here okay 60 arcane um for the blood buildup and the, the, the 40 vigor 16 mind 30 endurance 60 strength uh 60 arcane this is well worth it enough to beat the game with that you can definitely beat the game uh with this build we'll be getting one shot maybe 
maybe unlikely maybe 10 percent of the, of the attacks that, that the bosses deal they will one shot you at 40 vigor but i mean again you'll be dealing so much damage you'll be staggering your enemies so much it wouldn't even matter so this would be a lower level version this is at level 177 at the top of the screen okay this is very this is very doable and by and and once you're hitting the elden ring dlc even on a fresh character you should be at least like level 150 ish to what to, to 200 once you enter the dlc if you've killed you know all the all the you know notable bosses in, in the normal game that is okay so this the, the, this stat line is very attainable and can easily wipe out the whole game with um you just gotta play a, a little well you know what i mean just a little well okay but let the build carry you right and that's it man easy as that okay blood fiend's arm again an insane weapon uh i'm gonna go ahead and show off um, the end of the end of the video here with a bunch of the boss fights that I was running through the game with ye yesterday on stream and of course everything that you that that, that you see or you want to watch some live gameplay of me you know owning the Elden Ring DLC coming up with some cool builds deleting all the bosses go ahead and tune into my live stream at twitch.tv slash Kota Kobe you know what I'm saying I'm live there every now and then not every day not not a, not not a bunch of you know streaming hours um, but I get I, I get my time in and I have fun with the game you know and uh elden ring you make so many builds um you make you can make so many you know different customizable things for your character i love it i love this game and i plan to make a lot of build guides for it i also plan to do like a level one challenge a uh, new game plus seven challenge um no, deathless and no hit are also an option but like i said i I'm really not built that different. <laughs> Those guys that do that are insane. They're definitely on another level than me. Um, but definitely the build guides will be coming. And I think the next one I want to do is probably going to be that impen impenetrable thorns build that I've seen everyone do. I've done a little bit of testing with that. And holy shit, with the right items, with the right setup, that might even be stronger than Bloodfeed's arm. Which I originally thought was crazy, but it might be true. We'll see. We'll see. I got. I, I got to play it. I got to kill the bosses, and then uh, I'll let y'all know. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I also want to do a claws of night build. That build is kind of nuts. Um, for low levels, that build might be the strongest strongest build in the game. Who knows? But you can deal a lot of damage with that build. But yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, uh, as you can tell, I'm trying a bunch of shit. I want to make some good some good build content. You know what I mean? And really get into being a consistent content creator again, right? Uh, but in any case, thank you for watching. I truly appreciate it. You know, hopefully some of this information was useful. Hopefully you fly fly through the game just like I've been doing using these OP builds. And um, shit, if you, got, if you got any feedback, go ahead and leave a comment. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video. All that good shit for the algorithms, all right? Other than that, hey man, I'm out of here. Y'all have a good one. And I will see y'all on the next video for Elden Ring DLC Shadow of the Air Tree. Enjoy these boss fights. And y'all have a good one. What's up, dude? Okay. Staggered and dead. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> what was that, four hits? Okay. Be gone. Oh well. I am Esmer. There we go. <laughs> Yo, this game's this game's lit, bro. This is one of the best games made of all time. But you know why? It's because when you first fight this boss, it takes it takes what a few hours. The next few times, it gets lower and lower. To now, it just takes like seconds. This game's lit. Let's go. 
Come here, bitch. You and me. Jump, jump. Nice. Where you at? Come on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shit. I fucked up. Alright. Damn, this build is late. <laughs> Bro, I feel so powerful. <laughs> Holy shit. I feel so strong. Here we go. The mother of fingers. <laughs> Look at this boss. <laughs> Why is she built like that? I don't know. Oh god! Okay, I won. Wait. I'm pretty sure on the first hit, I did 12,000 damage. What? the hell? So that right there, I should have, I should have pushed damage. You know what I'm saying? Bitch. Alright. There we go. We just needed a few hits. Bro, you can stagger so easily with this build. What the fuck? Uh, I wasted the stagger there. He- that- that- that's not cool. He staggered and then fucking... No! Shit. He's gonna kiss me. Fuck you, I don't like femdoms. Or them boys. What? Woo! Fuck you. Let's go. Let's go. Yo, that stagger shit. It's so satisfying.